Oh. Okay, so here's the other thing. Alright, so you might as well point it at my face. Alright, so I've given my boys enough room to hang themselves. No. Yeah, I went to the bank and then I went and see my parents while well, I gave them this lovely job of changing the tongs, tongs on bill hooks on the Heston Baylor. Now, if you don't know anything about balers, this will mean absolutely nothing to you. But this unit here is the Nodder system. It is also known as the dirtiest sewing machine you're ever going to meet. Because that's all it does is ties thread all day long. Big heavy thread or baling twine. Now, Nodder health is very important. Your Nodders have got to be tuned correctly. And there's a couple of things that you can do to keep them tuned. First things first, this is the bill on the bill hook. So you have the bill and you have the hook. This hook is called a tong. The tong has two pieces, three pieces actually. You have the tong, the wheel or the roller, and then you have the pin, the pin that holds it all together. Um, what happens with these things is they'll get flat spots on them. And they wear. They actually get smaller. And the, small, the more wear that's on this, they'll wear the shoulder off the back, but the more wear that's on this actually causes it not to open wide enough. So it can only open so far. And if, it doesn't, if it's not allowed to open all the way, then that twine, the heavier twines that we use, are not allow, able to get in here. And it's not allow, able to grab it. So every once in a while, you got to check your bill hooks and bill hook uh, tong rollers. Now, there's really only one way to change this tong, and that is to drive out the, the cam gear, the cam follower gear. And while you've got it apart, you want to inspect it. Now this is normal wear. It's not excessive wear, but it's normal wear. You'll see that little dent there, and that's where it strikes right here on the cam. So it follows the flat side here, like a cell, and boom. So as it's coming around, it strikes that cam, and then it slides along that edge. And that's what turns this. So what you need to do is you need to take your bill hook here, which is like a so, and you got to remember how to do it because if you don't put it in there correctly, you're going to have problems. All right, so boom, this is how that goes in. So it's flat, it's up against there, really nice, blah, 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 blah. And then what I do with the, here's my pin. No, that's not the pin. Here's the pin. And then you just take and you put this pin, this, it's not a roll pin, it's actually a crimped pin that goes back into the gear. You have to find your, you got to find your sweet spot with the, uh, with the, uh, um, you got to find your sweet spot in the gear. So, all you do is you kind of give her a tap or two, and hopefully you get it in the right spot, which is right there. Very nice. And then, boom. So I'm going to take and show you the process of this. Um, there's a, you have to change the mount, each one, so now it is where it belongs. So. I haven't done anything different here with that, but it seems awful tight. Doesn't it feel tight to you, Joe? Yes. I don't know. No, it feels okay. It does. It feels okay. Oh, other than that. Alright, yeah, so that's it. We're good. So everything's where it belongs on this one. We could readjust the we could readjust the uh, the uh, knife arm, which I will demonstrate that in a little bit. So, all right. So we're back to rainy day work here, even though it is kind of sun shining right now. Blue skies for the next four or five days. So Tim and Joe have fought with this thing for what a couple of hours now. Mm -hmm. And Daddy shows up and did what? Took it apart. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I just wanted the boys to figure it out on their own. And uh, it is, if you don't know what you're dealing with, it can be quite difficult. So, anyway, I know what I'm dealing with. I've done it before, so. Oh. Huh. Ready? 
Okay, pull that pin out, put it there. Get your damn punch back out. Why that thing is being a pain in the ass? Put that there. And then you can turn this and boom, pull that out. Sometimes there are shims. I like to inspect them when I pull them out, and this one's still okay. So now, Mr. Joseph, we can go down. Is this the one he broke? Uh, no. No? That was this, a different one? Oh, it was that one. Okay. No big break. deal. We can take this one because it's the right size. And I've left that down there. Now, the, belt, the tongs are down there? Uh, yeah. Have the brand new bill hook. Transitioning, but yeah. It's right there. Okay. So I just want to show you what happens with these. I don't know if you can you know, understand or see what it is. But if you look at this, if you look at this, and you look at this, you can visibly see the difference in the size. This one here is much squarer, as this is sloped off to the side from following that cam. And uh Actually, this one's not too bad. They will get a wear spot right in here. Sometimes these tongs will end up with, literally will have grooves in them. But this wheel and this wheel, if I, I don't know if you can see it perfectly. Let me get it there. But you can definitely see the difference in that. And this one is actually not too god-awful bad, but they'll get flat spots in them. Well, here, this one's got a flat spot. Here's one with a flat spot. So if you can see that, can you see the flat spot on camera? I think so. All right, so then you get a flat spot, and what happens is, instead of the wheel turning, it'll just ride on that flat spot, making it worse and worse, and then it will open less and less, and eventually cause you to have mist ties about every other, every five or ten bales. Now, that can drive you pretty much half insane trying to figure that out if you don't know what the symptoms of an unhealthy knotter are. Well, I've been doing this long enough so I kind of know. Oh! Did you see that sucker go flying? Yeah. I found it. Okay. So that's what you do. Boom. Pull that out. I like to clean out anything that's in here because when if they don't if they don't open and close like they're supposed to it can allow buildup to get in the old hook, you know, and you can see the dirt that I'm pulling out of there. See that go flying? So you don't want dirt in the bill hooks. So you take that out, boom, get yourself a new one. And like I said to Joe earlier and Tim, that these little bastards are expensive. These are twenty dollars a piece. So you kinda gotta you kinda gotta understand that even though these are twenty dollars a piece, it's still cheaper. It's still cheaper to play with them and replace them than it is to be up there chasing knots and fixing fixing knotters. When you're supposed to be in the field, and especially now with the type of year that we're having, with the type of year that we are having right now. See that fixed. So this was this is an original bill hook. You can tell by the paint. This is a 2003. The old bill hook again was an original. Um, they last a long time, but they can also be a major ass ache if you don't know what you're looking at. So anyway, so that's that. I'm going to go back up and I'll show you how to put it back in again, just so you have that refresher course. And uh, yeah. Back up to the top of the thing. Yeah, I fell, I fell off of this baler damn near twice now. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but so, anyways, like I said earlier, you take your, you take your gear. Sometimes, in some equipment, some of the manufacturers will actually shim these to pull this hook down deeper onto the cam. So what this thing does is when it goes around, you can see it will open up the hook. See how it opens the hook? And then it's to catch the cam holder or the cam uh, spring follower. And, you know, so then it goes all the way around. But this is the direction it spins. So 
it comes around, it grabs the head, the twine, and of course it, it comes back and then it sweeps it off. So the knife arm sweeps it off. So, but we don't need to do that. What we need to do is get this in. This is inspected, it's fine. And I'm gonna show you how to set the knife arm. Again, I've done this before. I've shown people how to do this. I know my boys know how to do it because I've shown them and they, they've they retained the information in their memory banks, right, Joe? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I need my pin. And what I'm gonna do is I gotta get under here. Sometimes it can be a pain in the ass because these, I've already had to start the damn things, you know, just get them started outside of the, the knotter. But I think that's what I'm going to do right now. So you're having a little trouble, pull this sucker out of there, okay? And you want to start it just a little bit, just a, see, there it is. So you've got it started before you put your bill hook in. Because sometimes it can just be a little bit of a trick. And this is also a very good time to be paying attention to the other parts of your knotter. So you get that sucker in there, and of course it's not where I want it. Okay. Alright. Okay. Oh. Alright, so there it is. Okay. So we do that, we get our big driving punch, that's what we need, and voila, that pin will not fall out because it goes in a circle, so it's constantly being pressed from either side from the gear itself. So even if it's a little sloppy in there, you don't really have to worry too much. So. So you're having problems, you don't know what it is, and maybe maybe your knife arm isn't touching your bill hook all the way, and it's just super sloppy, you know, super sloppy on there, and you need to readjust your knife arm. This is your knife arm. There will get some wear here and right in here from string, but these are still in really good shape. The other thing you're gonna need to look at are the ball rollers at the back that follow this cam inside, and if they're if they've got flat spots on them or if they're not rolling, that can cause you a delayed knot cut and it'll cause a, a mistie. The other thing is here, the uh, these are the tucker fingers. You've got to watch those connections. Make sure that they are all straight across where they're supposed to be uh, when they are where they're at. Now, to adjust the knife arm. I know I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. So you make sure your knife arm is all the way forward, flopping around like this while the knotter's all the way up. Take a hammer, doesn't matter whether it's brass or steel, and smack it, okay? Then you're gonna feel it's gonna be like really tight there. You put that right over the center of your bill hook. And then you come over here on this side and you smack it again. And what that does is it sets the, sets the tension. You can hit it too hard, and it'll be loose, so you, you may have to do it a couple of times. Don't be afraid, you're not gonna break that. That's malleable steel. Whatever you do, do not hit the knife or the knotter frame. This is non-malleable, that's cast iron. You'll snap it like a twig, it's nothing. It's really, that will not be good. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and, is there a ditch in that? No, we're good. I'm going to go ahead and do another one of them. I'll let these boys finish it up because I think they can do it. Correct? Correct. Okay, so I'll do the next one. You can shut that. Okay, so I'm on the ladder to the 4910 Heston. Big baler, 4x4. And there's one thing that you learn over time, and that's patience. Now, a lot of people say you have more patience when you're younger with children. And you, uh, you know... That's why old men shouldn't have children because they lose their patience. But I'd have to say that it's wrong, uh, very backwards. I feel that with William, I have more patience. I mean, he cries a lot. I, mean, I don't know. This is just some observation of being a father. Any of you young guys out there that want to be a father before you're 25 years old, take it easy, slow down. You got time. And being a father at age 46 is kind of fun. It's interesting. Um, yes, 
it is sleepless nights, but I feel that the patience that I have now far outweigh the patience I had when I had my children. Now observing my former youngest son Joseph here, I gave him the job of changing out these these tongs on the bill hook. He did one and I ended up finishing them up. So out of six I've done five. Now I'm not quite finished yet because this last one has been a real bastard. It, it did not come out of there very good and it was from a replaced knotter frame. Joe pinched his fingers a couple times and then he smashed his finger, his hand, with the hammer like three times because he just hasn't gotten that aim quite right yet. But uh, anyway, so I took over the job and I finished that one up. And yeah, it was difficult. Probably the most difficult one up here was that one until the last one when I came across this. And if you can see that, I don't know if you can or not, but someone has drilled on this thing. Not me, but someone has drilled on it. And on the other side, it is actually mushroomed over and bent, which kind of surprises me. So someone actually tried to beat this thing out of here at some point uh, pretty aggressively. So I, uh, I, had, I have more spare parts for this then you can shake a stick at because to be honest with you it doesn't matter what knotter it is uh, this Heston it takes the same knotter as the 570 uh, small square baler it's the same damn thing uh, it's not the same as the Crone the Crone is the same as what the New Holland uh, BB series were the big baler series the heavy duty ones so that worked out really well um, that I have these extra parts so but watching Joseph, I think to myself, you know, he's 18 years old. I was, I was, uh, I got married when I was 19 and had Tim when I was 21, uh, almost 22 years old. And the patience that I have today far outweighs the patience that I had way back when they were young. So I just thought I'd, I'd say that. And I'm going to finish this job up here and put this new pin in. And life should be good. So when we go to the field, this knotter should run like a Singer sewing machine. And... I shouldn't hear any complaints about anything. So thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more.